So yeah, um, I had a slide about this actually, about me. So uh, my talk is called Linux I squared C and me. And I'll take care of the and me part first. He did go through it. Um, I'm an electrical engineer um, by schooling, but I have a lot of computer science experience as well. Um, I do printed circuit to board design, and some of these boards up here are boards that I helped on, or I actually, the, all three of the ones that are shown there are boards that I did um, myself. And he said that I worked on the, po the Pocket Beagle. I actually worked on the Pocket Bone, which was the predecessor to the Pocket Beagle. But it was kind of the, the stepping stone. Um, I do a lot of Linux board support, uh, kernel, U-boot. Um, I do a little bit of real-time stuff and some, some user space, but mostly low level. I've worked on several community in initiatives, including the big board org, a GSOC, a 96 boards, um, the EALE uh, training that's going on next door, and uh, KeyCAD uh, training is coming up in Reno next month, so if anybody's interested. I'll, I'll have some information about that out on social media soon. Okay. So we're first we're going to talk about um, what I squared C is, and then we're going to run through some example devices, uh, talk a little bit about the protocol, then we're going to skip to the I squared C subsystem, give a little history there, uh, some links back to um, different resources. I'll talk a little bit about each type of, of uh, driver. Well, not all of them. I'll mention them, but uh, there's, our, there's a few other, one, other pieces. But I figure there might not be enough time to go through it all. Um, then I'm going to talk about instantiating devices. And there's quite a few questions about device tree in the last talk uh, over in the other side of the wall. Um, so I'll, I'll go over a little bit of how to instantiate devices using different interfaces. Talk a little bit about the user space tools, which uses um, a character device, a, a generic character device for I squared C. And then I'll run a little short demo on the uh, pocket Beagle with the um, Bacon Bits case. So I squared C stands for Inter Integrated Circuit. So kind of a mouthful, but it was developed in 1982 by Philips, um, so it's been around for a long time. Um, it's a synchronous multi-master, multi-slave interface, it's, uh, not typical, uh, but it's, it's possible because of the type of signaling it uses. Uh, it's half duplex, meaning it can't communicate in both directions simultaneously, that's where it differs from SPI. Um, it uses open, open drain signaling, so the, if two devices are trying to be masters at the same time, it won't cause electrical issues, it'll just follow the transaction, and there has to be arbitration to determine which master is which, but for the majority of cases, you're a single master, multiple slaves. Um, you only have two wires uh, for signaling, uh, SDA and SDL. They are um, usually uh, 100 kilohertz uh, signaling speed, not super fast. Um, there is a link down there um, for Wikipedia. It goes on and on about the protocol. I really recommend taking a look at that. They did a really good job on that article. But here's some of the highlights. So it's a seven bit. Um, bus addressing protocol, uh, at least originally, and the original spec also called out 100 kilohertz. And then uh, progressively got faster and faster and added different features. So version one added four fast mode uh, with 10-bit addressing, which is part of the, the protocol. And then they just kept boosting it up. Um, the, the really fast, the ultra fast is actually unidirectional, being that it, it's it uses push-pull instead of open drain. That means it'll drive both low and high states. And so it, it, it's just one way. And then 
Intel came up with this thing called SMBus, which is a subset of I squared C, which is used on motherboards particularly uh, for monitoring devices, uh, temperature, fan control, stuff like that. Uh, they constrained the protocol electrically and they added uh, some uh, optional software addressing address resolution. So uh, I squared C it doesn't really have um, a way of, of kind of uh, broadcasting back um, what's on the bus. So that, that's kind of the limitation of the I squared C and SM bus optionally takes care of that. So here's some example devices that would use uh, I squared C. We got the real time clocks, EEPROMs, analog converters, which I use uh, quite a bit, sensors, temperature, pressure, accelerometer, etc. Uh, microcontrollers can actually be uh, master or slave, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, what are the differences? Um, there's touch screen controllers, uh, usually four wire resistive if they're I squared C. Um, GPIO controllers and the, uh, the monitors and TVs have a, these things called uh, DCD, which is kind of I squared C for detecting the the parameters of the monitor when you plug it in, so that it automatically works. So here's here's a few uh, sample circuits that I actually I grafted from a couple of my designs. This here up top is an accelerometer. That's actually uh, what was on this guy. There's an accelerometer on here, and I will show you guys accessing that accelerometer towards the end. Um, this guy down here is a PWM controller that's I squared C. Um, and it was on this board called uh, RoboMezzi. And it, it's also on uh, some Adafruit boards, different breakout boards. So you can drive up to 16 servos from the two I squared C lines. Um, the, one of the, the important thing about uh, I squared C is you, ha you have to have at least, uh, you have to have the, uh, the pull up resistors on there. You'll see that there's pull up resistors there. Uh, they're up to 3.3 and the, the signaling voltage is dependent on the controller you're interfacing with and if you don't put those resistors on there it just won't work. It won't pull up so the open collector uh, could pull it down. And if you don't put the right values then you also have problems because of the rise times. Um, there's a really good talk by Dave Anders that talks, it goes into detail about how the mechanism works. So I'm not going to get too far into the, the hardware stuff. Um, if you're interested, I can point you to that. I was going to add a link, but I forgot. Okay, so here's a little, here's a little um, picture of the protocol. Um, this is just the, the addressing in seven bit mode. Uh, it's a basic uh, transaction. So what happens is the lines will fall uh, low in a specific sequence to, to uh, signal the start of transmission. That's called a start bit. Really, it's just a transition sequence. And then the address bit is, is shifted out along with a read-write signal, which will be one for read, zero for write, and then an ACK bit will be either zero or one based on the acknowledgement. And then the data comes out either if it's a, if it's a read, the, sl the slave interface will send the data back on the, on the lines. If it's right, the, the master will send the data out on the same line. So it, it, it goes, it's, bi it's not a bidirectional uh, communication, but it, it goes either way. So it goes from the, from the host to the slave it, it, during a, a write, and then you'll have a little bit from the host, and then the rest comes back from the slave with a read. And then there's another transmission um, signaling the end. Now, typically, uh, a device will have another, this data is, is actually, def per device, there's a definition of the internal chip addressing, which will be, you know, what register internally, and then it'll have the values you want to send to that register or what is read back from it. So there, there is a bit more to the protocol. 
but it wouldn't fit on the slide with you know being able to to see it all. Um, so here we'll get to the uh, to the Linux portion of it. Uh, the early imp implementations were pretty early on in the two uh, the two point X era, and um, but they were there was one out of tree and one was kind of tied. Uh, I think the out of tree one was the LM sensors, but either way, eventually Greg Crow Hartman came along and kind of pulled it towards the new uh, developing device model, which came out in the 2.5, end of 2.5, early 2.6 era. And then David Bromel and, uh, and Jean Delvere, uh did uh, the standard device model uh, port in 2.6, and a lot of things happened since then that I can't really go through all everything, but uh, then uh, Wolfram Singh is the, is the uh, current maintainer. We'll talk about how you would get to a hold of the maintainer in a minute here. So um, here's a, an overview of what the, the subsystem looks like. Um, there's a couple of pieces that are required for the overall system. You have the, the, the core peripheral inside of the SOC, a Linux capable processor, will have a, a peripheral controller internally, and this thing called the adapter will allow the, 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 uh, the core portion of the, the I squared C subsystem to talk to the, the host controller's peripheral adapter or whatever. And then there's an algorithm that's usually built uh, for each um, host. They'll have an adapter which will just pretty much pass along a function that allows the core to talk to to the hardware, essentially. And then on the, on the top side, which is where most people are interested, you have the, uh, the drivers, um, the client, and the driver driver. It's kind of a silly name, but um, it's, uh, we'll go into that a little bit. So the, 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 the slave uh, device has an instantiation, talks to the I2C core, which abstracts the the, um, the SLC's peripheral interface so that it's the same across different platforms. So your, your I2C driver shall work across the whole I2C subsystem, and that's part of the, the device model. And then you just, just map it and go. Um, there is mention of I2C dev, which is a user space interface, so we'll talk about it towards the end. Okay. Um, the Linux I squared C subsystem mailing list. And if you're a kernel developer, you want to get to know how to use the mailing list. Um, so I get, uh, this is actually straight from the page. I just cut and pasted it in. Um, you can subscribe to the mailing list for the link there. Um, and there's the, the web interface for the mailing list. And the mailing list is, is your entry point into the subsystem for mainline. So if you wanted to do mainline development, you'll have to go through the subsystem, which the subsystem maintainer will monitor. And then he has his own separate Git repository, which we, he'll, he'll uh, apply the, the, the uh, patches that you send to him. And then he sends them up with um, a merge request to Greg Crow Hartman, which eventually goes up the stream to the mainline kernel. So. This is going to talk a bit more about the, um, the algorithm and adapter. So the algorithm dri driver contains general code that can be used for a whole class of ice cores adapters. This is actually directly from the documentation, which I have a link down here. Uh, I can actually show you that at, towards the end, if we have time, uh, the actual documentation. Um, and each uh, specific adapter driver depends on one algorithm or includes its own implementation. Um, which I've stated previously. Okay, and then for device drivers, they call it, they have it split to driver and client, and it actually says that right in the documentation, a driver driver. It's kind of silly, but that's what they call it. But this is essentially the I2C device driver where you'll contribute if you wanted to add like a new touchscreen controller you'd create one of these type of device driver for I2C and I2C subsystem. Uh, the protocol drivers 
are spread throughout the driver's subsystem. They're not contained to any one specific subsystem. So if you have an analog converter, you'd be in the IIO subsystem or HW mon, hardware monitor. Um, so the, the, the host controllers are actually in a, a specific driver directory, drivers I squared C in the kernel um, source, where these, these are everywhere. They're across the board. Just any kind of device you can imagine that has I squared C will be spread across the kernel drivers. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but I don't have a whole lot of time to go into it. Um, recently, I think uh, 2014, uh, I squared or yeah, I squared C maintainer added slave support. What that means is if your if your controller supports it, your Linux uh, SLC can actually act as a slave instead of a host controller. So that means you could actually talk from one from a Linux SOC to another SOC and it'll emulate uh, a slave device and there's some bindings that are required. This is a SysFS interface that you use to kind of poke in, hey, I want this particular type of slave. Um, the, the slave inf uh, interface documentation is down here at the bottom and there's a nice presentation from the uh, i squared c maintainer down there at the bottom. It uh, he goes through it in pretty much pretty pretty good detail. Okay, so I, I, I haven't really covered like the, the anatomy of of a, of a driver. I didn't think I'd have enough time, but maybe I I can show you at the end. Uh, but here's how we, how we instantiate devices. So one method is the device tree, and this is preferred method for you know ARM and other you know, device tree compatible devices. So the device tree binding will say, hey, I have this particular device, which is specified by the, the register and the compatible string. So the register is the I, I squared C address, and the compatible string is what binds the driver to, to the registration here. I can show you inside of one of the drivers where that is. And then Say you have multiple devices on the on the bus, then they'll just add add further um, registrations. Uh, this one is uh, special because it's a I squared C controller uh, for GPIO, so you have to specify that it's a, a GPI controller. Um, there's actually a GPIO controller on on the uh, bacon bits, but it's uh, SPI controlled. Okay. Okay. Now back in the day before um, the transition to the um, device tree. And I, when I first started, um, there was this thing called platform devices. And platform devices are a platform bus. It's still used, but it's abstracted a little bit. This was actually a, a physical C file in arc arm, mock, whatever architecture, and then a board file. The board file contained the registration for your different devices, and it was a C code. Um, I don't really use this so much anymore. There are maybe a few cases where this is still around, but they kind of transitioned away from it over time. Okay, and there's a way to do uh, instantiating from user space, which is is a neat feature, as long as your driver supports it. And um, you could you echo the, uh, the the driver name, the address. And you have a sys bus, I squared C devices, and then you have for each bus that you have on your system, you'll have a different I squared C dash, whatever, and a new device. I didn't want to break it down too much. Um, if you're interested in how to do that, there's an actual, there's a whole, um, for all the instantiation methods, there's a, a documentation in the kernel <coughs> source directly. Okay. So. We have some user space tools that are used, um, kind of abused at times. Uh, a character device, which is kind of an abstracted device, which can access pretty much anything on an I squared C bus. 
um, the device notes will come up at dev i squared c dash uh, whatever the, the bus number is. And then you have an IO control that sets a slave address, which was the number that the address in the slave protocol. And then you have you can use simple read and write uh, mechanisms. So you can say, hey, write this register or read from this register. There's an encapsulated version called I squared C SM bus read write. If you don't understand that notation, I can break it down for you. Yeah. Yeah, well, the protocol depends on the uh, device you're accessing, but typically you send the address of the, of the device, which is the I squared C address, right? Then you have an internal register address, which is sent as a, as a, a, a set of data. So you'll send the address, and sometimes there's other bits involved. It depends on the control or the controller on the slave. So you'll just send a sequence of bytes to it, and the, the sequence of bytes will determine what address uh, register internally is addressed. So that's part of the protocol, essentially. Um, what's that? No, the recommand is kind of raw, whereas this will actually uh, break it down in into separate, like it'll actually do a little bit more for you. And the dev, the dev interface is also uh, linked down here at the bottom. I, I know I've kind of pushed everything off to the links, but this is more of a higher level kind of thing. And you can you can go and kind of dig in if you're really interested. Um, these these instructions are pretty important for the uh, I squared C uh, user space implementation. There's a whole slew of defines and and uh, I didn't want to have to put them on the slides. It'd be slide after slide. Um, and then there's some tools that use that interface. One uh, is called I I2C Detect, which will it'll just kind of it'll go out at each address and kind of see if anything acknowledges, and it'll print it out on the screen in a nice little tab tab tabular form. Uh, it will ask you if you really want to do this when you use it. It's kind of real kind of tricky about it. This is, um, this is used for mostly for uh, early testing, and I can sh I'll actually show a demo of that, as well as a, a demo of a driver running uh, here at the end. Okay. There, here's the demo. Um, of course, this is always where the problems start, right? Okay. Uh, let's make sure. First, we got to get the council up there, huh? So we'll escape out of that. This council over here. All right. Is that not, probably not large enough, is it? How's that? Better? Sure. Okay. And I'm going to plug in the bacon bits cape. I'm going to use the serial debug header because it's just what I'm used to. I'm actually in an I uh, currently in a minicom instance, I believe. know this. There we go. Let's see. Oh, we don't have this SD card plugged in. So for the first demo, I'm going to use the, uh, the standard Debian image. Debian image takes a little while because it's it's a full blown OS, like uh, all the gadgets and what have you. All right. You'll notice I have a build root uh, file system that I'll, I'm going to boot up next for the next portion of the demo. It boots a lot faster. Why we don't do live demos? All right. So Debian. Okay. 
Do we have a prompt here or not? Can you see the prompt? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to sh uh, show an example of. Uh oh, my notes disappeared. Oh wait, I'm, uh, I'm guessing it's just down further. Hold on. All right. So I'm going to use I support C uh, utils to access the accelerometer on the board directly. And this is good for when you're first trying your hardware. You want to say, hey, is this is hardware working? This will give you a real, a real good idea real, real fast. So first let's do an I squared C detect and see what comes up. Uh, if I take that tilde off the front there. Uh, detect. All right. And then I think it's on bus two. Uh, let's see. Uh, I forget the command. Uh, dash. I think it's dash F. Capital F. And then dash. It tells you what protocols are supported by the bus. Tells you the different adapters that you have, and uh, let's see what the other command was. Uh, I think it's dash A. No, nope, not A. Of course, I don't remember the command off the top of my head again. Uh, Q. Either way, dash R. Uh, yes. Okay. There it is. It's the last one you try, of course. I, I, as you can tell, I don't use this often, but it is very useful when you first start. You see here it says one Charlie or one C. That's the address of the device, uh, the accelerometer that's on the board. So now I'm going to try and I'm going to poke at the registers internally on the, on that device. To set it up for uh, sampling on the on the um, on the converter, so let's go over here. This is going to poke a register internal. So this 2A is the internal register on the I squared C device, and this is the value that I want to write to that register. That one uh, turns the um, it's shutting off the conversion, actually. And this one here uh, is configuring the conversion to 2G, or 2G. Um, okay. And then we got, um, did I do that right? And then the last piece is enabling the conversion. Okay. Yes. All right. So I've written out some registers, and it's doing the conversion internally. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, the I squared C dump command, which I re it's really just to read across a bunch of registers. Let's see here. I got a kind of a watch uh, or a while one kind of loop to, to so that it shows the values as it kind of moves around. Okay. So you see how those you see how those registers are kind of wiggling around. Um, those are like the raw hex counts of the different uh, axes of the accelerometer. So if I move around the device, it'll change the values that are coming up down there. Um, not really readable in this form, at least not he uh, easily readable. Um, it's assigned value, so you'll see that the you'll have f f e f whatever, and then the number. It's a, for this one, it's a 10-bit conversion. So, but um, the, the if you're going to really use an I squared C device, you, you should make a, a, a real driver. So what I'm going to demonstrate next is 
the use of an, I, an industrial I.O. or I.I.O. driver to access the same device. Um, so, well, I, I got to get the other. Um, oh, well, I'm not too worried. I was going to put it on there directly, but I, I kind of last minute did this one. This is a build root file system. Okay, you see that? Landing fast. All right, so let's log into this guy. All right, so if we tried to access the same device on this with this build because it has a registration, it won't allow you to access it with the other tool. So if I were to do this I squared C set on here, it'll probably balk at me. Cannot access device or resource busy. So I mean, this that the driver is bound to the I squared C bus at that address. Um, and then let's see. Go back into the, the where the registration comes through. This plus I squared C, and we have a devices directory. Oh, so anything that's that's registered will show up here, and you see there's the uh, the second bus zero zero one Charlie. That's our device. So that means the platform uh, register. There was a registration for this, which is in the device tree, and I can I can show you guys that if you'd like to see it. Um, so yeah, it tells you the, a, a bit about the device. So you see that it's an industrial I/O device. So the um, thing about the the device model is it's kind of recursive, and so if you register something on I squared C bus and it comes up as a, as a different type of bus, it can kind of go down from there. So um, IAO is in sys, uh, I know bus, IAO. And there's a, whole, there's a whole other talk about how IAO works, but we're just going to show you this, that the device is, is uh, attached here. Uh, See if I got it here. Uh, what do we got? So okay, so you see there up at the top, you'll have the accelerometer scale and then accelerometer readings. They're all broken down into virtual files. So if you cat those files, I'll give you the raw count. It's a signed count, so. Um, if we do a Y reading, oh, I guess Y would be this channel. And let's see, that shows you that it's orientated uh, either right side up or up. And then you have one for each axis. Um, I created this little special script that accesses the accelerometer. So let's take a look at it first. Okay, and what it's doing is it's catting those files into variables and then uh, <coughs> rendering them out to the screen. That not really complicated. So then we got our test. Arm. All right, and there you go. So you can watch it kind of live as I move it around. You can see the different axes change. So. The protocol driver in this case is, an, is the industrial I.O. driver. The adapter driver is an old map uh, um, controller driver that's based on the SLC on the bottom here. So I guess I could show you some of the various pieces if we have some time. Do we have some time? 
Uh, yeah, it looks like we have plenty of time. So let's take a look at some of the different pieces here. Oh boy, I can barely read that. A lot of those links I showed were hyperlinks, but they're also all the documentation is actually in the in the, the source tree directly. This is the um, kernel tree here, and you'll see I have multiple um, different um, sub repos. Origin is the, the mainline kernel here, and then. Uh, documentation, right, squared C, and a lot of the, the the text that I kind of just kind of scammed out of some of these files. If you want to get into more detail on anything particular, just go in here and say, "Oh, I want to learn more about how the slave interface works." There's a separate file for that. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention was multiplexers or muxes. Uh, this allows this, uh, multiple devices of the of the same type to be on the same bus, but multiplexed. This is useful because the address space of I squared C is quite limited, and there are going to be times when they overlap, or you want to have more of the same device. Sometimes we'll just use pins to change the address slightly. But when you don't have that option, you use a multiplexer. Um, so anything that, that you're interested in should be here. Make this a little bigger. Okay. And then. Let's go to the uh, registration. Uh, I guess that would be and for the platform registration for, the, uh, for this system. Use the device tree. This is the controller registration will be in here. I squared C2. And there's I squared C2. Alright. And what this is does is it, it, it maps a compatible string, which will be in the driver, and it gives you the registers. The platform registers are memory map registers inside of the SLC. And this is used to, uh, to pass to the driver through the instantiation. These, these are kind of fixed. You usually have to worry about this. If you have a, a system that has a good Linux support, this will already be taken care of for you. But then, which one? Uh, HW mod? Yeah, I'm not real sure on that one. It's a TI specific, see how it has TI in the front? So you'd have to look at the driver and see how it parses that, and d what it does with it. So the driver for the I squared C, I squared C, so there's uh, the uh, drivers and then anything that's um, a bus or a, an adapter would be in the buses directory. So every SLC, or implementation is going to be for the for the um, adapter side will be in here, and the TI one would be uh, I think it's uh, I squared C OMAP. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll have a compatible string here. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be down towards the end. Okay. So it's a platform driver. So there's. There's going to be a lot of boilerplate 
uh, code here. Um, and then you have the open firmware match table, which is here. And you see you'll have the compatible strings. And when it, when it probes, when it sees the, a match, a compatible match, it'll probe the driver, and this data will be passed. So this data will give you a little bit more information. This isn't necessary for all different controllers, but they like to combine the controllers for different, like, series of processors into the same driver to eliminate redu redundancy in the code. And then you have... So that gives you that, tells you what's going on with that particular uh, device. And then um, there's, there's quite a bit involved in making a, a, a an adapter driver, which I really couldn't cover in uh, one presentation. Maybe it could be a separate session. But there's going to be callback functions that are called from the I2C core driver to accomplish what you need to. Um, there's a lot involved. So let's uh, quit out of that one. And then let's look at the protocol or uh, driver in IIO. Um, it was an accelerometer. what it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the name of the accelerometer, I can't remember, it's MMA something, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, are in the 84 or 52? There's a, there's a series of them that are going to be supported by it. And 8453 uh, is the one that we're using on the Reb1 of the, of the um, CAPE. This is the one that was usually or used originally, but we, we leveraged stock from GHI, so we, we had to go down to this guy, but no big deal. And so this, this is a, the driver that's it's quite a, a lot of code as well. Let's go to the end where the important stuff is, I guess. So here's your typical uh, I2C driver. We'll have this uh, driver struct, and it'll have some callbacks here and pointers to tables that are useful in matching the device. So again, there's a device tree um, pointer table, and that'll match with the device tree entry. So we, we put this freescale underscore uh, 8453 into the device tree under the I2C subnode, and then off it goes. And th it'll probe that device on boot if the driver's loaded. And if the driver's loaded dynamically, it'll detect and load. And then uh, uh, what'll happen is the, the probe, the I2C probe will be called. And it, um, the I2C client uh, struct will pass the rel rel relevant information down to this guy, and then you'll have uh, per, s per controller um, data. So, our, so for each, you have to uh, allocate a little bit of uh, memory. DevM IO IO device alloc is specific to the IIO, and anything that starts with DevM is is nice because when you won't have to do a free call in the remove function, it'll just do that magically through the uh, through the uh, course so and then you got you know your basic some bus read uh, byte data who am I and then it figures out who it is and attaches who am I yeah uh, it's going to tell you a little bit about the device uh, okay. so it's it's a register internal to the to the uh, accelerometer, the and then the, this these are just uh, kind of defines to say hey wh which register reads out this value and it's gonna be slightly different based on the different types of devices but you get the idea. Um, back to the bottom. Uh, 
and this table here is is you can use for kind of like dynamic probing and um, uh, platform registration outside of device tree. Like that file that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, the platform files. Uh, if you guys would like to see an example of the platform files, this is kind of legacy, but they used to end up in Linux. Arc, Arc, Arm. It, a lot of them been factor out, especially in Arm, because it was quite a mess, and Linus Torvalds got really mad, and they fixed it. That's a uh, OMAP two, I guess. There's not going to be a whole lot of examples here, but um, there is a still a platform file. Uh, there was one for each different board. And here I got it. It just gets a little out of hand after a while. But inside of these, they'll have those that platform registration, which I showed in the slides earlier. So I guess that's enough for the demo. We can uh, move on to the questions now that we have like 10 device minutes left. Device. device. The new device file. Uh, new yeah. Uh, yeah. It's already it's already instantiated. So. I don't know if that doesn't work for all drivers, but you it well it, it, it depends on the probe function. So let's go back into the driver. This particular driver, I think uh, Jason had problems getting it to dynamically allocate or whatever. Um, so he had to use a device tree overlay, I think. Uh, and the problem was they didn't have any code for handling that. So it was either you had a device tree uh, registration or it just wasn't there in the driver. Um, I suppose I could show you that. Drivers, I.O., accelerometer. What's that? Overlays are kind of new, but... Oh, was it? <laughs> I had two CD twice, yeah. Distracted typing again. There we go, 84, two. And then we go down to the probe function. And then you see this device tree, of, uh, this is the open firmware de uh, device match. And you see how it says, if not match, unknown device model. So it doesn't, it doesn't really expect anything but a, a device tree for this particular driver. So if it did support it, there'd be other stuff? There'd be more code, platform code. And um, I'm, I have a little um, session about I squared C that will cover a bit more of this detail um, tomorrow in the embedded a ALE. Uh, if you're registered, you can come and see that as well. Um, so I guess questions besides. Uh, Pretty different. <laughs> uh, this is this is uh, is a, a busy box image, and it's very small. It could be smaller actually, but oh, not free dot h is free dot uh, k, I think. Uh, I'm doing it wrong. Two k's. There we go. We wanted the megabytes, kilobytes, gigabytes. Okay, so we're only using 13 megs. Not bad. It's it can be up there. Depends on uh, what you have running. The Debian stock image does run a lot of uh, web services and stuff. So really, th this this is about as uh, as pretty bare bones. It doesn't have a whole lot of of features installed. So uh, Buildroot is good for kind of a small footprint type of of, of uh, builds. Anybody else? Sure. Oh, this guy. Two more. Because 
these hex addresses aren't unique in that they can be assigned to mul uh, multiple devices. So you could have two separate, completely different types of uh, I2C devices that'll have the same address. But you could perhaps uh, kind of maybe grep through the driver code. It, it's really not easy. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of tricky. I guess the other way around would be trying to find the schematic for um, the um, board that you're working on. And if you're doing board support, you usually have that. If it's still something you can't figure out, then I guess you kind of go upstream to the, the hardware manufacturer and see what's going on. We got one back here first. Yeah, hi. Um, I apologize. This might be a pretty basic question. I'm not too familiar with um, ICC, but with the example that you have with the accelerometer, uh -huh. um, it seems like that is just kind of streaming data over the ICC, ICC bus, I4C bus. It seems like that, but what I'm doing is I'm I'm actually polling the device continually. So it is polling. That was my question. Yeah. So if, if, that, if it's always a polling type interface, or if there is streaming, and if there is yeah. Yeah. The, if there's multiple devices on the bus, it, it, they won't they won't talk to the to the master unless they're addressed. So that's a way of arbitrating between. So if and there's really no streaming involved. You you have to you have to from the from the uh, the master you have to say hey read from this specific device. It's not going to stream across the because otherwise it would cause all sorts of collisions on the bus. When you showed the accelerometer, mm -hmm. there was a register on there that was like, who am I? Yeah, that's something specific to that accelerometer, right? Okay. I was wondering, is that, you know, if let's say uh, I was trying to create some IT Mm -hmm. Is there like some kind of a convention that a particular register is a what am I register? Or is there a discussion of that? Yeah, I, I, we'd have to dig into the protocol a little bit. There are, there probably is something like that. The, the who am I register might be standard, but I don't know, I don't go that far into the spec usually. I just try to get the device at hand working. Um, the, the link for uh, Wikipedia has some pretty uh, uh, detailed explanation of the protocol, and it also has a, from there links back to the actual spec, where you might be able to find something like that for I squared C protocol. But the, the, it's not a, that's not like a completely standardized kind of thing. Like, you know, there are, I mean, like you do look at that we know, uh, mm -hmm. the interface over there says it reads, mm -hmm. and doesn't even pass a register. The protocol is defined, and the address of the, the device has to be specified before you do a read. No, but the registers on the device itself. The registers on its device are really dependent on the implementation of the device itself. That's right. There's no standard to those. Like, you know, the yeah, register number three should be the what am I register. Yeah, there's no, no direct standardization, I don't think. Um, but there, there is kind of a, uh, kind of a guidelines so that you can use basic um, the same kind of algorithm or the same kind of register mapping from one device to the next. So if you have like from the same vendor you have like say from TI you have uh, a touchscreen controller or, and then you have an ADC uh, accessing the registers, uh, the, the address probably would be in the same place because they're probably going to reuse that, that internal um, hardware uh, slave core or whatever. But it's really up to the to the data sheet to to determine the protocol beyond the addressing of the device itself. With the algorithm, what what were some of the different algorithms or uh, algorithm? variations there? Like so, uh, th th there it's kind of. 
kind of standard algorithm. The let me let me try to uh, get a feel for what you're asking. Like, are there different types of algorithms that are used for ICC? I mean, I, I can imagine that there's one for the protocol, but I didn't know if there was different variations I, for. Yeah, I think there are. Just I don't know them off the top of my head. Is it similar how like you know SCI has different settings like yeah. the rising and falling edges and things like that? It it wouldn't be quite like that. It would be s other types of parameters, uh, like the, the the protocol would maybe determine the sequence of bytes or whatever. But um, I I usually you, you you the protocol is really just saying hey jam these two lines. The adapter is pretty much saying hey call back to this function and then that function will do what you want it to do essentially. There's not a whole bunch to it. Um, there. If I was an I squared C expert or an, a Linux kernel I squared C expert, I'd probably give you a better answer on that. But I just kind of get things working essentially. Um, one other thing I was wondering is sometimes I get confused when you look in slash dev for the ICC adapter mm -hmm. um, and how that corresponds to the peripheral that you're trying to use. The ICC peripheral, like because um, sometimes they're not the same. Like you might be doing Yeah, there's there's a um, you mean the the name of the device? Yeah. yeah. There is there is a mapping called uh, aliases in the um, in the device tree file, which will determine the order. Uh, if you don't specify, it'll it'll kind of pick the order for you. Um, I could probably show you that. Probably pretty low on time, but let's check it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's your aliases list, and this will determine the order. So it's pretty straightforward on this particular device. They're just one to one mapping. But you can change, you could say, if you wanted the, the peripheral controller that's mapped at, at I squared C1 on this, come up as I squared C0. It really just depends on this alias here. Okay. And that it's useful for the ordering of the serial ports as well, and um, the USB controllers, et cetera, Ethernet. So that, that's used to kind of determine the order and the, and the device, essentially. Yeah, you, you, if you don't register it in the, in the device tree and you enable it, it's not going to show up. So in the top level DTS, you'll have, uh, well, and this, this is the DTSI, which is kind of like for the SLC. And uh, you'll notice that, let's see, I squared C0. You have the status equals disabled right here. So as, as long if the if you're not mapping a device to it, then this will stay disabled and it'll, it won't show up in the device list. If you if you <laughs> if you have uh, a, the device tree file for your specific device, then you can probably enable it. It's just a matter of getting to it. And another thing to worry about is the pinboxing, though. So 
So there may be uh, five or six controllers, and, but they're all coming out through a limited number of pins, so they have to be multiplexed out to the SOC pins. So if you want to use them as I squared C, you got to make sure they don't contend with anything, and they're actually broken out to pads somewhere. And then you have to set the multiplexer so that it sets that pin for that specific function, and then you can enable it and, and, and go, essentially. So it, it's kind of like there's a few hurdles, but you could do something like that, yes. Yeah, so you're kind of piggybacking onto another bus? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they probably some kind of maybe for firmware or something that they don't want you messing with. Or, yeah, that that's either hap happens earlier on in the boot, and then they don't expose the interfaces to the user space or to, you know, even to the kernel. It depends on how it's mapped in the in the device tree. Yeah, if you if you have uh, mainline support for your device, I'm not sure about that particular one, but yeah. yeah. It's one thing I didn't bring up is pin muxing can be kind of one of the first things. Like if I can't get my device working, first thing you do is determine if your pin muxing is correct. From there, you got to determine if you have the the, the pull-ups on the lines so in, and not in multiple places, not too small of values, and then from there it's just kind of software, pretty much. Alright, uh, 